Episode 155, Brad's Replacement. But how are we supposed to find an artist who's suitable for Emma? The LM representative asked. Even if there is one, he probably won't be available right away. How about we just wait a little? I'll give Brad a call. You know as well as I do that Brad's father is not someone we should offend. The representative felt a little uneasy. David thought for a moment before shoving his hands in his pockets and nodding his head. In that case, call him right now, he said. The man gave him a relieved smile and then turned around and pulled out his phone to call Brad. Freddie answered and repeated that Brad wasn't feeling well and couldn't come to the shoot. As you know, Freddie said, Brad just finished shooting a movie, so he's a little tired. His stomach hasn't been feeling well, so he's been in the hospital for the past few days. You'll need to wait a couple more days for him. How about you just tell me the truth, the representative whispered, covering his mouth. What is Brad unhappy about? We can fix it. Well, it's nothing major, Freddie replied. But you see, Brad wasn't feeling well to begin with. And then two days ago, he was stood up by Emma at dinner. This ruined his mood and worsened his condition. The representative quickly caught on. Brad was targeting Emma merely because she hadn't gone to dinner with him. He began to speak, but Freddie cut him off. Brad doesn't want to make things difficult for you. So how about this? I'll go talk to Brad, and you go convince Emma to bow down to him. Bow down? The representative thought, smirking. He wants to make her bow down? Make her drink with him? Make her smile at him? Make her give him a public apology? He didn't reply to Freddy. He hadn't expected Brad to be so arrogant. How can he hold a grudge against Emma for something like this? He thought. She simply didn't want to have dinner with him. After that, Freddie hung up. The LM representative turned to David and sighed. David, please wait a little longer. No, David said straightforwardly. Replace Brad. I overheard your conversation. That boy has always been a player. The fact that Emma refused to have dinner with him shows what type of person she is. She doesn't want to cause a scandal by being seen with him. So replace him. I have no respect for people who use their family's wealth to avoid responsibility. If he thinks he's so great, he should get his father to come see me. He even wants a woman to apologize to him. Doesn't he feel any shame? The representative was caught between David and Brad. In the end he decided to follow David's suggestion to replace Brad. However, finding a suitable replacement wouldn't be easy. Just as the representative was starting to feel uneasy, Richard approached the two of them and asked, Has Brad still not arrived? I'm afraid he won't be coming, the representative said. By the way, do you know of a male model who would be well-suited to Emma's height and appearance? The biggest issue is that Emma's tall. For the photo to be aesthetically pleasing, we need a man who's roughly 6'2". Richard looked down and thought a bit before replying, I do indeed know of one. The representative was ecstatic. Will you be able to contact him? He asked. How much does he charge? He and Emma are personally acquainted, he said. So you don't need to worry about money. He doesn't need it. However, there is one condition. Do tell, the representative said. You can't reveal his identity, Richard said. In other words, you can't show his face. Also, during filming, the set has to be cleared of anyone who doesn't need to be here. The representative was dumbfounded. He glanced at the director. The director immediately assumed the man didn't want his face shown because he was from outside the industry. He nodded and said, No worries, I'll only show his back. How's his appearance? No need to worry, Richard said. This person's appearance, height, and presence all suit Emma perfectly. Someone outside the industry? David asked curiously. 
with such good qualities, why doesn't he make a career in entertainment? He just doesn't answer to anyone, Richard replied, winking. David clapped his hands together and said, Then it's settled. I'll ask Emma to do a test run first. He turned to the representative and whispered, Who could this big shot be? With Emma's status, she couldn't possibly know someone more famous than Brad. <laughs> I'm curious too, the representative said, laughing. Not long after, the first set was ready. The scene was a proposal on the beach, and the idea was for Emma to be standing under the sun as a man approached her from behind, grabbed her left hand, and forced a ring upon her finger. There was only one line. If you don't marry me now, we will be too old. Five minutes later, Emma walked out of the changing room dressed in a long, light blue patterned chiffon dress. Her long black hair blew softly in the wind and her makeup had been applied delicately. Her whole body evoked feelings of peace and calm. The LM representative was quite satisfied with Emma's look. Whenever she got changed for a role, her disposition would automatically transform. Though she normally appeared a bit cold, after getting changed, she looked warm with a slight smile on her face. She had suddenly transformed into a woman in love glowing with happiness. Emma, let's do a quick run-through of the scene, the director said. Emma normally would have declined, but thinking about the man who was about to appear made her nervous. She never felt this way before. Even I get nervous sometimes, she thought. So she nodded her head and stepped onto the set. She practiced her walk, lowered her head, and practiced her facial expressions. As the director watched her through the monitor, he was pleasantly surprised at her abilities. Emma was no professional actor, but she looked very natural in her role. The anticipation of waiting for her lover, the anxiety as time passed, and the disappointment as she realized she'd been stood up, Emma expressed it all with her eyes. She's only a model, the director thought. Compared to some of the up-and-coming actors I've seen, she's heaps better. Cut, the director called out before turning to the representative from LM. When will the male lead arrive, he asked. I've been told he's getting changed right now. Let's see who Emma managed to invite, David said. If it's not someone of influence, we'll just let her do the shoot alone. Sure, the representative replied. We'll do as you say. I'll also keep an eye out for other suitable male models. While the two of them were talking, Richard approached and asked for all unnecessary staff members to be removed from the set. The representative immediately did as he was instructed. Once he'd cleared out most of the people on set, only a few important people and Emma were left. Everyone was waiting to see what godlike person Emma had invited. Moments later, Confident footsteps resounded from a distance. The few people on set quickly turned their heads toward the sound to see a man with an imposing presence striding toward them. Episode 156. Their Relationship. C Kaleidoscope CEO! The representative from LM was stunned as he pointed at Eric and stuttered, How is this possible? David was also lost in a moment of disbelief. Emma had actually managed to invite Kaleidoscope CEO Eric Roberts, who was capable of determining the life or death of an artist. He had total control over the entertainment industry's resources. The high and mighty, mysterious CEO, Eric Roberts. Dear God, he thought. Nothing could be more pleasantly surprising, yet terrifying at the same time. M Mr. Roberts, how are you? The representative asked respectfully. Even David had to show a bit of dignity around this man. No need to be polite, Eric said coolly, adjusting his suit jacket. So you, LM's representative couldn't believe that Emma had managed to bring him along 
so he had to confirm it. I heard that Emma needed help, so I specifically made some time to come here. Will it take long? Eric asked calmly, without clarifying his relationship with Emma. The way he spoke merely suggested that he was well acquainted with her. It won't take too long at all. Who would have thought that Eric Roberts would be willing to make a guest appearance for a friend? The representative responded in excitement. Only for Emma. Eric had a piercing gaze as he gave a simple reply. The representative was stunned. He never expected Eric to be so straightforward. His imagination started running wild, thinking of the many possibilities. However, a brief sentence from Eric set him straight. She is a rare talent. I couldn't think of a reason to reject her, he declared, not allowing anyone to think otherwise. The representative and David nodded their understanding. They knew that Eric appreciated good talent. As both Eric and Emma kept low profiles and appeared cold and mysterious to outsiders, the fact that Eric was helping her didn't raise any suspicions. Even when trying to find a connection between them, all that could be felt between the pair was an innocent friendship based on mutual respect. Nevertheless, this innocent friendship was extremely special. Even Kaleidoscope's artists were rarely important enough to catch a glimpse of their CEO. Yet, with one phone call, Emma had managed to get him to step away from work and rush over to lend a helping hand. Also, I hope that me being here on set will be kept a secret, Eric warned them. Of course, no problem, Mr. Roberts. The representative gave him a thumbs up as he rushed around to get a confidentiality agreement signed. They couldn't afford to offend Eric. He didn't say anything in response. He simply lifted his head and gazed across at Emma. Their eyes met for a few moments. LM's representative originally wanted to ask Eric if he was aware of what was required for the shoot. However, they were lucky just to have him here to help. They would have no objections to anything he had to say. The representative turned to David and asked, can we get started? Of course, but does Mr. Roberts know? Let's just get started, Eric interrupted. He didn't want to waste any more time. He knew as well as Emma what the shoot would consist of. There would be three parts, the proposal, the wedding, and post-marriage. Of course, David made a gesture to the crew, telling them to begin. He had wanted to ask Eric whether he needed to do a test run. However, because of who the man in front of him was, he didn't have the courage to question him. He could only let them film it first and see how things turned out. David, pinch me. I want to know if I'm dreaming, said the representative. It's Eric Roberts. The CEO of Kaleidoscope has actually come to take part in our commercial. How great would this be if we used it for publicity? David turned to look at him. He also felt extremely honored. After all, how many people have ever filmed a commercial with Eric Roberts? I must be the only one, he thought. This was a man who could turn the entire entertainment industry upside down by simply snapping a finger. Swapping Brad was so worth it. In this world, there were hundreds of people like Brad, but there was only one Eric Roberts. I know how you feel. It's like I'm on cloud nine, responded David. Look at the others. They're so surprised that their jaws are about to drop off. This proves that Emma can't be underestimated. He turned to the two people standing in front of the camera. Emma, you and Mr. Roberts warm up to each other first. We'll start shooting after a 10-minute break. Emma looked over at her husband. He appeared tall and well-built, dressed in a black suit with collars neatly ironed. This exceptionally handsome man 
was steadily walking towards her, and she felt her heart melt into a puddle. Although the scene in front of her was staged and the script was fake, as long as the person was real, that was all that mattered to her. Mr. Roberts, I really wasn't sure you'd agree, she said, grinning. Eric watched as her dress and hair fluttered in the wind. He approached her and gently swept her hair behind her ear. No one else would be able to invite me. Only you. You are my weakness. Didn't you say that you'd propose to me and let me experience the romance I deserve? She said. I want you to film this commercial with me. Do I have to do as you say? As they stood by the beautiful scenery, her lips curved upward into a small smile. Eric could no longer resist the urge to touch her, so he immediately turned to the director and said with a serious expression, No need to wait ten minutes. Let's get started. I have a meeting later. Okay, let's start then. David quickly nodded and prepared to start. The scene began with Emma standing barefoot on the beach, gazing into the distance. Afterwards, she paced back and forth for a few moments before standing still and holding onto her dress, tears spilling from her eyes. At that moment, a tall figure appeared behind her. He carefully took her right hand and placed an engagement ring on her finger. As the scripted lines were uttered from his mouth, it was impossible for her emotions not to stir up inside her. His voice sounded deep and charming. At that moment, the camera zoomed in on Emma's face. Her expression was surprised and slightly emotional, as if the man in front of her was really the man she loved. The director looked at the natural actions of the two and was completely taken aback, particularly when Emma released tears of joy. He never imagined they would complete this part of the shoot so quickly. They had practically accomplished it in one take. The scene flowed smoothly without any flaws. Afterwards, Emma flew into Eric's embrace, placing her ring-wearing hand on his shoulder. The scene was harmonious and beautiful. The pair were completely in sync and full of emotion, like a couple that had been together for many years. The way they acted in front of each other was so natural. Are they really not a couple? LM's representative couldn't help but mumble. Director, look at Emma's sweet and lovely glow paired with Mr. Robert's adoring expression. If they aren't a real couple, then they must be born actors. Which do you think is more likely? Episode 157. Perfect. David was dumbfounded for a moment as he rubbed his chin in careful thought. Emma rehearsed previously and her acting was great to begin with. As for Mr. Roberts, I hadn't noticed his expression. Whether they're lovers is their private business. If you want to survive in New York long term, I suggest you not be so nosy. LM's representative laughed gently as he rubbed his head helplessly. I just feel that they give off a natural couple vibe. That's a good thing for LM. The first scene of the commercial was finished quickly. So the photography team quickly reassembled at the next location. The second scene was of the couple running toward the chapel. On the way, the bride sprained her ankle and the groom helped her remove her shoes before carrying her on his back up a flight of stairs. In the distance, a beautiful European-style chapel stood on the resort grounds. During this entire scene, it would remain in the background. This time... Emma would actually get to wear a wedding dress. Inside the changing room, she was getting her makeup done by a professional artist. Next to her hung the beautiful champagne-colored sleeveless wedding dress that she was to wear. It wasn't the most beautiful wedding dress. It had multiple layers of gauze without any diamonds or gemstones. 
However, it did have a delicately hand-embroidered pattern, giving the dress an exquisitely elegant look. It didn't flare out too much at the bottom. The simplicity of the design was because L.M. did not want it to look overwhelming. However, to Emma, the dress was like her relationship with Eric, meaning there was no need for it to be fancy. Lisa resisted the urge to say something. It wasn't until Emma had changed into the dress and stood in front of the mirror that she exclaimed, You look so beautiful. I agree, the makeup artist added. The wedding dress is quite simple, but the person wearing it is gorgeous. After helping Emma position the hem of her dress neatly, the artist left the room. Lisa huddled up close and smiled. Could you consider this as taking advantage of work for your own personal gain and using it to make up for the wedding photos you didn't get a take with your husband? Emma smiled. She didn't deny it. Fine. Since your husband is the big boss, you can do whatever you want. But I must say, you look beautiful. Emma had done bridal fashion shows before, but the feeling she had during those shows couldn't compare to what she was feeling at that moment. After all, the person she was paired up with this time was the closest person in her life. This time, the jewelry she would be displaying were all accessories that were needed for the bride. She wore a necklace and earrings, her ink-black hair held up by a crystal tiara, and a long veil flowed down her back. She walked out of the changing room, and everyone admired her in amazement. Meanwhile, Eric, who had already finished changing a while ago, stood a short distance away, staring at her. His heart felt heavy. No matter how many times he had imagined Emma wearing a wedding dress, seeing it in real life made his eyes unceremoniously well up with tears. L.M.'s representative observed the expressions on their faces and lowered his head to smile without a word, thinking, All of this can only mean one thing. If this isn't love, then what is there to get emotional about? Okay, get ready for the second scene. With the director's order, the couple quickly found their positions in front of the camera. They played the part of the engaged couple in a hurry to get married. When it came to the part where the bride hurt her ankle, the groom immediately knelt in front of her, pulled off her shoe, and flung it onto the floor. Then he carried her on his back. Emma leaned on Eric's broad back as her heart raced. It seemed that no matter how much time passed, just the thought of this man, even a simple touch or thinking about how well he treated her, was enough to make her involuntarily expose a silly grin. The director noticed this and thought it was perfect. No matter if she was standing still or moving, Emma's beauty was vivid and natural without being overbearing. She didn't steal the attention from the radiance of the jewelry. The shoot quickly finished. However, Eric continued to carry Emma further and further away. She patted him on the shoulder. Aren't you tired? I want to carry you to the ends of the earth, Mrs. Roberts. Have I told you how beautiful you look in a wedding dress? He asked, walking forward without looking back. Mr. Roberts, I definitely haven't told you how handsome you look in a white suit. She replied, you're the target of every man's envy. The couple filmed two further scenes, and the director was extremely pleased. This meant they didn't have to spend the entire day filming and could possibly wrap up in a half day, leaving them with the rest of the night to relax. A while later, the pair returned to their original position separately and started discussing the third scene, which was to be the final one. They would be showcasing their wedding rings. L.M.'s representative suggested that they pick up straight after the wedding without having to change clothes. However, the director didn't feel it was right. He felt it was best to represent 
three layers of a relationship. Emma thought for a moment before suggesting, why don't we show the couple 10 years after their marriage? Both their love and the rings last forever. What do you think? Okay, 10 years it is, the director agreed, nodding in response. The scene was being shot on a wooden bridge with a lush green forest behind them. The colors were vibrant and clear. This time, Eric was dressed in a dark blue handmade suit. His back faced the camera as usual. However, he still gave off a dignified and mature vibe. He was no longer the man from the previous two scenes who had sneaked up to his bride in secret or flung her shoe to the ground. He appeared tall and reliable, stable like a mountain. As for Emma, who stood beside him, her character no longer had the impatience or disappointment of a young girl. Neither did she have the excitement or nervousness that she'd had during her wedding day. At that moment, all she felt was peacefulness and contentment. The couple had their backs to the camera as they admired the scenery. All that could be seen was Eric's left hand holding on to Emma's right, displaying their delicate wedding rings to the camera. At that moment, Emma leaned over and placed her head on his shoulder. Perfect! This is absolutely perfect! It's too beautiful! The director praised in excitement. He looked over at everyone else. They were still immersed in the atmosphere between the couple, savoring the moment. It wasn't until the two moved away from each other that everyone finally snapped out of their days. It was only a commercial, after all. Dear God, this is bound to be a hit, they thought. Everyone applauded loudly. A few even screamed in delight. Emma returned to being a model, and Eric returned to being the almighty CEO of Kaleidoscope. The distance between the two could once again be felt. Emma, you were amazing. Of course, we must also thank Mr. Roberts for making a guest appearance. Everything was perfect, David exclaimed cheerfully. His compliments were sincere. Eric nodded as he glanced over at Emma. I'm glad to have helped. You've done us a huge favor. Honestly, we're so thankful to you, Mr. Roberts, said the LM representative. Remember what you promised about keeping my identity a secret? Also, make sure to take note of the mole on my earlobe. Don't worry, it won't be an issue, the director nodded. If you're busy, you should hurry back to the office, Emma suggested to her husband. He didn't say anything, simply nodding in response. Later at home, they would be able to sit down and pick out their favorite photos. Emma understood the look in his eyes as she smiled slightly, but in the back of her mind, she couldn't help but wonder what would happen next with Brad. Episode 158, Can't Afford to Offend. Brad's manager, Freddie, was still trying to persuade him to go to the shoot. Brad had finally finished his workout. Beads of sweat ran down his tan skin. Looking at his muscled body, accompanied by his tough and handsome face, it was clear to see how he'd managed to become famous so quickly. However, his personality was another story. Freddy didn't know what else to say. Although he was also angry at Emma, he didn't feel it was necessary to delay one's work for the sake of punishing another. However, this was the type of person Brad was. All right then, let's go to the shoot, Brad finally said, acting as though he was being extremely generous. He wiped the sweat from his body. Great, I'll go get the car. You can get changed on the way. His manager felt a sense of relief as he quickly went to retrieve the car from the parking lot. Brad looked exhausted the entire way. Even as they approached the resort, he didn't look like he would be recovering his energy anytime soon. This made Freddy slightly worried. Your fans are all anticipating the highlights from this shoot. Have a quick nap so you can look your best in front of the cameras. In all of New York, 
Who else is as attractive as me? Brad scoffed before crossing his arms and closing his eyes for a rest. He seemed to think that his appearance was a gift sent from the gods to save the film crew. A while later, their car turned into the resort. However, they were surprised to find the crew already packing up their equipment. Freddy assumed it was because Brad couldn't make an appearance, so the director had no choice but to postpone the shoot. He looked around for LM's representative, but ended up making a phone call to him instead. He was told that LM would directly contact Brad's agency for a chat. He placed one hand on his hip and tried to explain over the phone. Brad was indeed not feeling well, yet he still came all the way here. Didn't he make it here in the end? However, the representative was no longer in the mood to talk to him, so he directly hung up the phone. He helplessly grabbed at a nearby staff member who was packing up. Where's the representative from LM? Brad has arrived. The staff member peeked at Brad sitting inside the car and replied, The commercial's already finished shooting. Freddy was shocked. He scrunched up his forehead as he frowned. What do you mean? The male lead hasn't even arrived. How could the shoot be over? The director replaced the male lead and the shoot went smoothly. So we're now packing everything up half a day earlier than expected. Then the staff member left the resort with the props, leaving him standing there all alone. He wasn't impressed. He would never have imagined that LM, the director, and Emma all had the guts to replace Brad. How dare they? He trembled in anger as he returned to the car. He held onto the steering wheel for quite some time without saying a word. Brad sensed the change in his mood. With his eyes still closed, he asked, When will the shoot start? It's done he replied in frustration. Brad forced his eyes open as he asked the manager in an agitated manner, What do you mean? You were replaced and the commercial is finished. Do they even know who the hell I am? How dare they replace me? Brad was young and arrogant, so swear words came flying out of his mouth. He clenched his right fist and punched it against the back of the driver's seat. Who did they replace me with? Don't they want to survive in this industry? I'll go investigate. Freddy didn't look happy at all. Although Brad wasn't an A-lister, he was pretty much on the same level as them. How dare LM replace Brad, he thought. No wonder the representative refused to talk to me over the phone. Give my father a call right now. If I find out whose idea this was, I'll definitely screw them up. It better not have been that bitch Emma. Brad reacted like a conceited, good-for-nothing rich kid. His career up to that point had run too smoothly, and everyone had spoiled him. Therefore, when he faced a humiliation like that, it would have been surprising if he'd managed to bear it. Freddy once again called LM, but no one picked up. He then tried calling the director. Director, Brad and I just arrived on set, but the staff just told us that the shoot's already finished. Can you explain? Isn't Brad sick? In order to let him rest, I decided to replace him. Is there a problem? David asked calmly. How could you do this? said Freddy. Brad was LM's designated male lead. Also, we already signed a contract. I already explained to you that Brad was sick. David scoffed. If he was sick, then why was he working out at the gym? The manager was dumbfounded. His fans have already posted up photos of him at the gym. How could you tell me that he wasn't feeling well? David's voice was fearless and unfazed. The commercial has finished shooting and my job is complete. As for your contract, you need to discuss that with LM. It's not my responsibility. He was about to hang up, but Freddy quickly cried out to hold him back. Who was the male model that replaced Brad? An outsider. I suggest you don't look into it. He isn't someone you can afford to offend. 
With this simple reply, the only thing he could hear on the other end of the line was a dial tone as the director hung up. He was so angry, he almost threw his phone on the ground. Seeing his reaction, Brad asked, Who was it? The director told us not to look into it. Apparently, it's someone we can't afford to offend. Am I, Brad Riley, not someone he should be worried about offending? He complained resentfully. He then pulled out his phone, typed up a paragraph of text, and posted it online. I am baffled as to what I have done wrong to be replaced for no reason. Although I have always known about this industry's unspoken rules, I'm still extremely disappointed. I won't blame anyone. I can only blame myself for not working hard enough. I wish for everyone to be treated fairly. As he was currently very popular, and his fans were generally quite young, they were furious after seeing his post. They immediately asked him what had happened, who bullied him, and why he sounded so unhappy. A while later, a fan posted Brad's daily schedule online, which showed he was supposed to be at the resort filming a commercial. Does this mean that his role as the male lead was stolen? The fans thought. They all began speculating. Some even rang up Richard Collins, trying to get insider information from Emma, but he didn't respond. In as little as one hour, the post was shared over a hundred thousand times. Brad was pleased. If he was going to be treated this way, then they might as well be unhappy together. After all, in this industry, Fans have always been more forgiving of male celebrities than female ones, he thought. I can't wait to see Emma, the director, and LM being scolded like dogs. Episode 159 I Shouldn't Accompany You and Your Craziness A popular young actor was replaced. The entire incident was reported online by the actor himself. In an instant, discussions were stirred up and famous bloggers were sharing the story. Anyone who had ever been a victim of Brad's temper was laughing in secret. Judging by his position and background, they thought that the person brave enough to replace him must either have been crazy or a hero. People began assuming that this man must have had a death wish. Someone also pointed out that he was posting his message at the same time he should have been filming LM's commercial. Is he hinting that LM are the ones that replaced him? Fans thought. They were extremely agitated. In their eyes, Brad was like a god. He was their idol, their dazzling prince and he'd actually been replaced. They could not tolerate it. Other fans noticed that the female lead for the commercial was the endless warrior, Emma Miller. Emma again. It seems like she's always involved in scandals. Hence, someone started questioning, what do you guys think is up with Emma? Why is she always involved in everything? Don't drag Emma into this. She's only a model. She merely does her job to the best of her ability. She doesn't have the power to replace anybody. Emma's fans quickly stepped in to defend her. Don't speak too soon in case you get punished. <laughs> Emma's always kept a low profile. However, her popularity shot up too quickly, so she got in other people's way. That's why she always gets slandered. Inside the manager's van, Richard was browsing through the comments online. He turned his head to look over at Emma. Seeing her calm expression, he said, Brad is causing a commotion online about being replaced. Apparently it started because he arrived at the resort this afternoon and discovered that the shoot was done. He was so angry that he went ahead and exposed the incident online. It would have been so funny to see the look on that spoiled brat's face when he realized that he got replaced. Lisa said, sitting in the back seat. She couldn't contain her delight. 
Richard glared at her quickly before turning his attention back to Emma. I was the one who recommended the person to replace him. Brad will definitely hold that against me. I have a feeling we're headed into a tough battle. Lisa was surprised. Should this even be something to fuss over? Even if you hadn't made a recommendation, he still would have been replaced by someone else. Do you think his fans will believe that the director and I didn't team up against him and that I merely made a recommendation as a generous gesture? Do you think they'll be reasonable and let Emma off the hook? Lisa was dumbfounded. Only a moment ago, her mood had been high. It had since fallen into the depths of the abyss. There are photos online of Brad at the gym, taken by fans who saw him there, said Emma. Lisa, hurry and take a screenshot of them before they get deleted. Also, Richard cut off Emma mid-sentence. All contact artists who have previously collaborated with Brad. Hopefully, I can get them to unite and expose his dark secrets. That way, we won't have to worry about the commotion he's causing. He understood what she was thinking, but as her manager, he would handle whatever crisis they were dealing with. Emma also understood what he was thinking. However, if she felt that her input would help ease the situation, she would go ahead and say it. Actually, if Mr. Roberts were to handle this issue, it would probably be a lot easier, Richard pointed out. Hearing this, Emma smiled. I've said it before. Eric is simply my husband. He's not something I make use of and sacrifice in order to progress. The only reason I asked him to help out at the shoot was because I wanted to make up for the things we missed in our marriage due to it being a secret. I already expected this outcome, so I'm willing to accept Brad's baiting. Richard, from now on, I don't want you to suggest anything like that again. In fact, don't even think about it. Just because a woman is married, it doesn't mean they don't have the ability to do things on their own. After all, a career and financial independence are the keys to having an individual persona. Richard smiled. I know the type of person you are. I was just saying it because I thought it was a pity. Don't assume that Eric can do whatever he wants just because of his high position, she replied. There are plenty of people willing to challenge him. After all, who doesn't want ultimate power? As his wife, I have the responsibility to help guard his empire. Well, the incident hasn't gotten to the stage where we should worry about it just yet. So let's not be so negative for now. Richard comforted Emma. In the past, you've overcome so many obstacles with Lisa... Don't forget that now you have me as well. I must say, today's shoot went perfectly. When you get home, pick out a few nice photos to decorate your love nest. At the mention of the photos, Emma pulled out her wedding ring from her bag and placed it on her finger. It was like she suddenly blocked out the noise from the outside world and could only sense Eric's thoughtful nature. However... Brad's fans quickly blew up the issue and broke out in an uproar. They'd even gathered a group together to demand the truth from LM and Brad's agency. They planned to get justice for their idol. LM and Brad's agency had already privately negotiated canceling their contract and agreed on compensation. But seeing that the incident had elevated to such a high level... Brad's agency had no choice but to step in and protect their artist. After chasing LM for an explanation, they found out what happened during the incident. It was the director's decision to replace Brad, and Emma's people were the ones who'd recommended the replacement. Once Brad was notified of this, he immediately posted another message online. Emma... I've never offended you. Attached to the post was an image of a middle finger with the words complete bitch written on it. 
With the release of this post, the internet was in a frenzy. A popular male actor was tearing apart a famous female model. Before Emma had gotten out of the van, Charlotte Garcia saw the news. She called Richard and asked him to report to the office immediately to provide an explanation. You go home first, he said to Emma. I'll handle Charlotte. He knew, as this incident had been Emma's idea, if he let her go against Charlotte, her future at H-World would not be easy. You're working hard. Emma understood his meaning, and she nodded her head before stepping out of the van. She noticed Lisa was following her, so she turned around and said, Go home and rest. Why are you still following me? I'm worried you're unhappy. That's not enough to make me unhappy, Emma replied calmly. Help me gather evidence instead. That's more productive. Okay, in that case, give me a call if you need anything, Lisa responded, making a phone call motion with her hand. After seeing Emma nod, she felt relieved and left Tribeca. Outside the window that evening, the sun shone with a blood-red glow, painting half the sky in a fiery light. Eric pushed open the door of his home to find his sleeping beauty lying on the sofa. He couldn't bear the thought of waking her up. However, Emma was only lightly sleeping. She opened her eyes upon hearing him step in and begin taking off his shoes. You're home, he nodded. I asked Luke to do some calculations. Do you know how many times you've been the biggest headline in the three months that we've been married? He removed his jacket and sat down beside her. He took this chance to pull her into his arms. As for this time, you've indeed left evidence behind for people to find. I shouldn't have accompanied you and your craziness. Emma lifted her head and looked into her husband's eyes. Who told me to be seduced by your good looks?